I may have heard this somewhere. I can be. I might be wrong about this, but I think there may have actually been a job opening in Texas last year. I would imagine for a guy who loves the state of Texas so much, that might have crept onto your radar a little bit. I mean, you got your deal done at Baylor, so it never got there, but um, it might have, right? You know, who knows? I mean, but it never did. You know, like I said, I. I just feel blessed to be where I'm at, and I'm around good people that, that have a lot of trust and confidence in me and vice versa. And, you know, I, I, like I said, I like our drive. You know, I like, our, I like being proactive. We're a very proactive university, and, you know, I like where we're headed. So, you know, if, if the food's good, you know, don't switch restaurants. I mean, the, the food's really good at Baylor. And, uh, like I said, I feel very thankful to be there. One of the quotes I read from you, Art, that uh, I thought was real poignant is uh, you say, invents in my life made me unafraid. Um, and you've been um, a little bit more public talking about these events in your life uh, coming up on the 38th anniversary now. It must be hard for you to believe it's been that many years um, of the car accident um, where you lost both of your parents and your aunt. And you, know, you were playing at Houston and they were coming to see you play a game. Um, and obviously it's just an unimaginable tragedy. And my understanding is that for a long time it's it's something you just didn't really talk about with the public, with your family, with anybody. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a combination of people not wanting to broach it with you, you certainly maybe not being eager to put it out there. But then last year you published a book. Uh, it's called Looking Up, My Journey from Tragedy to Triumph. What made you decide to take this incredibly painful private episode and put it out there in such a public way? You know, it, it's an event that never leaves you. You know, I actually visited the grave site yesterday. So it's, it's something that stays with you forever. But I think as you get older and, and longer in the tooth, as you mentioned, you know, that, that you learn to deal with, uh, with tragedy on, on a, a more professional level instead of personal level. And I deal with so many, you know, student athletes that have their own stories, you know. And so it's, it's kind of made me open up as we've gone along because, you know, I feel like my purpose is to you know, to help grow, you know, help those student athletes grow. And I think the events that have happened in my life make me more dependent on other people. And that's the, that's the thing you got to really guard because when you, when something of that nature happens to you, it throws you into a shell, you know, and it makes you want to isolate where it needs to be just the opposite. I mean, you got to lean on people and you got to trust people. And I've been able to do that as I've matured and hopefully I can help some of our student athletes do that as they're maturing because you know, you always need people in your life to help you get through difficult times. It's interesting because you were just talking about why you love Texas so much, the rugged individualism and not relying mm -hmm. on other people. That must have been a hard mindset for you to get out of that say, you know what, your parents are gone, you really kind of got to lean on other people some more. Yeah, I did and I had people reach out to me and that's, that's another thing you love about people. You know, everybody's got a gracious heart, got a lot of compassion in it and I, you know, got to go to people's houses for Thanksgiving and Christmas, had some coaches that really reached out to me at the University of Houston and, you know, just all the way through my life and career. So if, if I can help somebody, you know, through a book being published, you know, to have hope, maybe in a hopeless situation, then it certainly served its purpose. You talk about your faith a lot. You talk about your faith a lot in the book. It's, it's right there in the title. Were you angry at God for a long time? I think you question without question. You know, I did. You know, you, you, it, it kind of throws you back and you know, you just say, I mean, why, why could this happen? Why would this happen to, to three people that, you know, in, in my mind were as, um, you know, good of people as it was on earth? So uh, without question you do. And then, then I think once again, as you settle and mature and, and you know, fight on, uh, you see that there's, there's a bigger purpose and there's a plan. And, you know, we've all just got to live for that purpose and that plan. So when your kids ask about your parents, what do you want them to know about their grandparents? All just, you know, that they would have, have loved the opportunity to, to meet them and be with them. Uh, but they were, you know, just people that worked extremely hard to, to, to live the American dream. My dad went to the Navy, came back and went to college after the Navy. Was, you know, the Navy paid for school. My mother, you know, graduated from high school and started her, you know, college career when she was 30 years old after my dad was working, being a teacher and a coach and went and got her degree and then taught, you know, special needs kids you know, through her career. So I think they just, you know, would, would be proud of the way that they, you know, just did the right things to have the right results at the end of the day. Your son Kendall is your quarterback coach, am I right? 
Well, he's an uh, offensive uh, recruiting coordinator and receiver coach. Okay, he's, he's on your staff. Yes, sir. Are you happy that he's chosen this profession? A lot of guys who are coaches not only say they're not, don't want it for their kids, but they want their kids to do anything but coach. You know, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> not that he listened no, to you, no, by the no, way, yeah. you said, but <laughs> how do you feel about it? I, I like it. I mean, it, it's, I, I don't think there's a better profession. You know, it's only one we know, you know, and our family's been in it all our lives. And, you know, every, everything revolves around football season, you know, and, and preparation and getting ready. And then, you know, the games and, you know, the highs and lows that are associated. So, you know, someday out there, I'll see what life is like, you know, in reality. But, you know, right now, this is our life, and, you know, I'm proud for him to be a part of it. Well, I appreciate your stopping by. I'm glad you stayed at Baylor. You well, guys got a good thing going. Appreciate You're it. fun to watch. Just win them all. Honored be fine. to be there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks, Hart. All right. Thanks thank for you, man. By. Appreciate it.